Hello, if you are watching this video, this is for the um, asynchronous uh, lecture um, for the when you guys are not taking um, exam two um, during the week of October 12th. Um, so this week, you guys will be doing lab seven, single pendulums, okay? So uh, again, um, come to lab for the lab activity. Um, so we'll be continuing looking at work energy and energy resources here today. Um, so last time, briefly, last time we talked about the um, conservative force and non-conservative force. So basically, if you are doing work against a force, and then later on, you retreat your force that apply on the object, then the object will gain kinetic energy. So then that force you are doing work against is called a conservative force, okay? Um, Example will be gravity, it's the one of the conservative force. And then um, otherwise, if you are doing work against the force, then um, you are actually not storing energy to the system. Meaning if you take away the force, then the object is not gaining any kinetic energy. So then that force you are doing work against is a non-conservative force. For example, friction force is a non-conservative force, okay? Um, for work done by a conservative force, um, if it's done on a closed path, then it's zero, okay? Otherwise, um, for a non-conservative force, work done on a closed path is actually not zero. And if you have work done by a conservative force um, from via two different passes, um, the work done should be pass independent as long as the initial and final positions are the same, okay? Um, otherwise, uh, for a non-conservative force, it's pass dependent. Um, and then we took a look on the potential energy. So potential energy is defined by um, the um, work done by conservative force. If you're doing initial potential energy minus the final potential energy, then that's um, work done by the conservative force, okay? And then the potential energy, it's the um, related to what force is that conservative force. So if you have gravity as your conservative force, then it's gravitational potential energy, okay? Work done by a conservative force reduces the potential energy of the system, and then work done against the conservative force actually increases the potential energy of the system. So for gravitational potential energy, um, it's um, depending only on the vertical position of the object, okay? So the Y, so potential energy, gravitational potential energy is equal to mgy. So you have to pick a, pick a ground level potential energy level, which you define your potential energy at that point to be zero, okay? So then y, the y position for the object at that level should be zero, then you can write a potential energy at other locations as mgy with respect that y equal to zero. Um, we also talk about work done by a conservative force, so which is um, another conservative force here. We took a look on the spring force. So then work done by the spring force is equal to one half kx square. Potential energy in the spring is also equal to one half kx square, okay? And we talk about conservation of mechanical energy. So basically, if there's a single force on the system and that force happens to be a conservative force, then um, the conservation of mechanical energy applies. So basically kinetic energy final plus kinetic, uh, potential energy final should be equal to kinetic energy initial plus potential energy final, okay? Or the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy should be equal to constant. And the sum of the two energies, potential energy plus kinetic energy, it's called mechanical energy, okay? All right, so um, today we are going to expand the conservation of energy. Um, so also applying the kinematics into the uh, problem. So we'll take a look on this example. So it says um, the water slide in the figure below ends at a height 1.5 uh, above the pool. And then the person starts from rest at point A, leaves the slide horizontally. So when she leaves the slide, she has a horizontal velocity here and lands in the water at point B, okay? So it tells you point B is 2.5 meters in the figure here. It says, what's the height of water slide? So this H, it's looking for this H, okay? And again, it assumes the water slide is frictionless here, okay? So let's take a look on here. 
I'm going to stop sharing here and then um, switch my camera over here on the paper, okay? So um, if you are watching this video, you can pause the video for right now and you can try to solve this problem by yourself. And then um, after that, you can resume the video and then check um, the solution um, to see uh, if you get this one right, okay? Or where you got stuck. So again, as usual, we'll sketch the problem here. I'm going to just do it again over here. So this is a slide, okay? Um, the person, the girl starts from here, slides down, this is point A, all right? And then this is the height of the slide H. And then the end of the slide over here, and it's 1.5 meters above the main water over here water surface over here, okay? And then when she lifts the slide over here, she has a, a vertical or horizontal velocity here. She, so after she leaves the slide, she will be in the air and then that should be a um, projectile motion, right? So I point B here when she lands. It tells you this is uh, 2.5 meters, all right? And then this is 1.5. Okay, so let's analyze the scenario over here. So we took a look on um, the example that a person slides down a slide, okay, um, last time. So, and then if there's no friction, which is the same case here, no friction here. So then the, um, there will be mg on the person, there will be normal force, which is always perpendicular to the, displacement at any given moment. So then that normal force should be doing zero work, okay? So the work total then will be just um, be equal to the work done by the gravity here. So again, um, if you look at when she slides down the slide um, towards the end of the slide here, so let me call this as point C, All right? So we have A, B here and C here. So then from A to C, you can apply conservation of mechanical energy, okay? <clears throat> and then from C to B, this is a projectile motion, okay? So from C to B, it's a projectile motion, all right? So you can probably use the kinematics. So this is the kinematics we learned before, okay? You can apply equation of kinematics from point C to B. <clears throat> All right, so here we can apply conservation of energy from A to C, so that's right write this. Um, so starting from point A, so potential energy plus kinetic energy at point A should be equal to potential energy with C plus kinetic energy C, right? So that's conservation of mechanical energy. Now again, we have potential energy involved here. So uh, because you apply conservation of, of mechanical energy here from point A to C, so I'm going to take C as the low point where the um, potential energy is going to be zero. You can, you can also take UB to be zero, okay? Potential energy by point B to be zero, but I'm not applying conservation of en uh, mechanical energy from A to B. So I'm going to just focus from A to C at this point. So I can take that, that's the low point of motion where to be the ground level potential energy, okay? And then K of C should be equal to one half MVC square, okay? So let's call this VC here. At point A here, KA should be equal to zero because she starts from rest, right? Now UA should be equal to MGH, MGY, Y will be H, right? This is Y equal to zero. So then this Y point A should be equal to H, okay? So MGH. So you can write down, okay, so um, MGH plus zero is equal to zero plus one half MVC square, okay? Just as we did earlier. All right, we are looking for H, right? That's what we are looking for. It's asking what's H? What's the height of the slide? So you're looking for H here, all right? So you figure like, you figure out that M and M will cancel out, right? So M will cancel M. So then H is going to be equal to VC square divided by 2G, right? All right, now G is constant. Now what's VC? So the, the question becomes what's VC, right? 
So it looks like we are not, so last time we are given H, then we will be able to figure out V at this point, right? But this time you are looking for H. So H is unknown. So you shouldn't be able to figure out VC by just looking at from point A to C, right? Now that's the remaining part of the problem. So from C to B, okay? So we'll take a look at that. And then we should be able to get VC from there, okay? So from C to B is a projectile motion. So then you can set up a coordinate system for that part of motion. You can pick a point C to be the origin and then that to be X, this to be Y because she's going down. So I can pick a downward to be the vertical positive, okay? And then X to be this direction, all right? So, um, so with that, then my x now is equal to zero, right? My y now is also equal to zero. Now my x is equal to, so if this is zero, then my x at point final point B should be equal to 2.5 meters, right? My y at this B position should be this y here. So it's 1.5 meters, right? Now this, um, so if it has, uh, if she has the original horizontal velocity first, then my Vy zero is going to be zero, right? My Vx zero is going to be just that Vc, the um, horizontal component, right? So then we can write that x equals to x naught plus V zero x times t for projectile motion, y equals to y naught plus V zero y times t plus one half gt squared because now I have negative as downward position, uh, downward direction, okay? So I have these two equations I can write. And um, looks like I have, this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, right? Initial y is zero, so the second term is zero. So then I have this guy and this guy. Now this is vc, right? because Vox is equal to Vc or Vzox is equal to Vc, okay? So then from these two equations, you can write that 2.5 is equal to Vc times T, and then 1.5 is equal to, or 1.50, 2.50, is equal to 1 half, 9.8, right, times T squared, right? So you have these two equations, you have two unknowns. From here, you can solve for your T, right? So your T, um, or you can look at the t square here should be equal to 1.5 divided by one half times 9.8, right? And then because you are looking for t, so you take square root to get rid of um, the t square, okay? So then that should tell you your t is going to be equal to, <clears throat> let me take a look at my notes here. So the T is equal to 0 0.553 seconds, okay? Now I have this T, I can put it back into the first equation up here. So then I can solve for my VC should be equal to 2.50 divided by the T, right? 0 0.553, okay? So that gives me my VC as 4.518. One eight meters per second. Okay, so once you have this guy, take this guy back over here. You should be able to solve your h. Okay, so h. Sorry, my mistake. Um, I was not fully captured, but you can take a couple of minutes to see the full solution up to now. <clears throat> okay, so take that back to this, and then solve for your h. So h equals to v c square the 4.518 squared divided by two times 9.8, okay? So your H will be 1.04 meters, okay? <clears throat> All right, so that's the full solution for this one. So again, you're, you're divided into two parts. The first part, you apply conservation of mechanical energy. And then the second, second part is the projectile motion. You apply kinematics of the uh, projectile motion there, okay? So this is a combination of um, work energy and kinematics, okay? All right.
All right, so um, we have talked about work energy theorem. So in that, um, when that applies, basically you have work just done by conservative force, okay? Now let's take a look on um, um, more general um, scenario here. So if you have both non-conservative force and conservative force, then um, what happens, okay? So if you have a non-conservative force or a couple of them present in the problem, then the total mechanical energy should not be conserved because now you have work done um, by non-conservative force, okay? So then you should write total work done equals to work done by conservative force plus the work done by non-conservative force, okay? So W um, sub NC stands for um, non-conservative force. Now we know that work done by conservative force is equal to the negative or it's against the change of uh, potential energy, okay? Negative change in potential energy, right? So then um, combine this with the work energy theorem, which says work total work done should be equal to the change of the kinetic energy, right? So then um, minus delta U plus W and C should be equal to delta K, okay? Because this is the total work done. So if you move this guy, to the other side of the equation over here. So then you will have delta U plus delta K, okay? And then this is WNC remaining on this side. So WNC work done by non-conservative force, then it's equal to change in potential energy plus change in kinetic energy, which is also um, just um, the change in mechanical energy. So then for work done by non-conservative force, it's just equal to change in mechanical energy or the change in potential energy plus kinetic energy. So with this, we'll take a look on um, one example here, okay? So this one says, if you have a 1.2 kilogram block initially held at rest here against a spring with a force constant of K equal to 730 Newtons per meter, Initially, the, spread, the spring is compressed at distance D. So this is D and it's the unknown you are looking for. When the block is released, so you can see that um, this, this block will gain kinetic energy because of the spring is pushing on it. And then it will reach over here with certain velocity and then we'll leave the spring because the spring has natural length over here. It's not tied to the spring over here. So you will leave the spring and then continue sliding on this frictionless surface until it reaches the rough patch over here, which reduces the block's velocity, okay? And then it tells you after um, the block travels through this rough patch, its speed is 2.3. So it gives you 2.3 meters per second and then the length of this rough patch is 5.0 centimeter. It also tells you the coefficient, coefficient of kinetic friction um, for the rough um, patch and the block is 0.44. So then what's this distance D, okay? So you can see during the course here, um, there's a spring here, there's rough patch here. So this is your initial position. This is your final position. Okay, and then you can realize that the work done is by a conservative force of spring, and then and this part is the non-conservative force of the rough patch. Okay, so let's take a look on the um, how you can solve for this one here. Uh, again, I'm going to sketch the problem on my paper here. There's a rough patch somewhere here. I'm going to call this length L equals to 5.0 centimeter or 5.0 times 10 to the negative two meters, okay? So you want to pay attention to the units given here. All right, so this is the spring being compressed originally, there's this block over here. All right, this is the equilibrium position of x equal to zero. You're looking for this d or 
is the whatever um, this guy. Now it says initially v is equal to zero being held at rest, okay? So because less uh, work done by non-conservative force, so you can write um, work done by non-conservative force should be equal to change of the potential energy plus change of kinetic energy, okay? Or change of mechanical energy, all right? Now, up to this point, we have talked about two potential energies, gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy, okay? So um, at this point over here, so let's take this as our initial, right? So U of I should be equal to elastic potential energy, one half K D squared, right? And then plus MG of Y, okay? Now you can take, because this is the horizontal plane, you can take this as um, y equal to zero, right? So then this guy goes to zero, okay? But um, in another scenario, you may have y now equal to zero, okay? Because in this case, the um, vertical position doesn't change, okay? So that's fine. So you can either write this as zero or you can just ignore that term, okay? Connect the energy should be equal to zero because velocity is equal to zero initially. Now, at the final position, when it goes through the rough patch over here, all right, um, the potential energy, U final, let me write up here, should be equal to just MGY, which is zero, okay? So that's zero. Kinect energy final should be equal to one half MV final square. Now, um, V final is given, M is given, so you can um, calculate that, okay? But we are going to take a look here. So the work done by the non-conservative force when the block going through this guy, okay? So we'll take a look on the free body diagram when it's going through there. So the mg here, the m up there, these two should equal to each other and cancel out each other. And then the friction force should be against the um, direction of the motion, okay? So then work done by that friction force would be the fk or minus fk times that distance l, right? So WNC is equal to minus FK times L. And then FK, friction force should be equal to mu K times normal force, right? Normal force should be equal to MG. So minus, so mu K MG. So then this is minus mu K MG L. L is the 5.0 centimeter, okay? So you have this term that goes there and then you can work on those two. So you can set up them. This minus mu k mgl is equal to delta u, which means uf minus u initial, right? Plus delta k, which is the um, kf minus k initial, okay? So u final is zero minus one half kd squared, that's the u initial plus, one half mv final square minus zero, right? Equal to minus mu k mg l, okay? Now take a look on this one here. You're looking for this guy, right? And the rest k, you are given 730. M is given 1.2 kilogram. V final is given as 2.3 meters per second. L is the 5.0 centimeter. M is given, this is 0.44, G is the constant. So you can solve for this guy, okay? Um, I'm going to rearrange terms over here. So I'm going to make this guy to the other side of the equation, negative becomes positive. So one half K D squared equals two, and then I'm going to move this guy to the other side of the equation, okay? Um, one half MV final square remains plus this, mu k m g l. So then I'm looking for d, I'm going to separate d square. So I'll divide everything by one half k, okay? So one half k and then one half k there. So then d square equals to one half, one half will cancel out. So m over k, v final square plus, okay? Now this over one half gives you twice. There's still m over k here. And then mu k, you write it down, gl, 
Okay, you can single out m over k vf square plus 2 mu k gl parenthesis equals to d square. So then take square root to get d means take square root there. All right, and then plug in the numbers you have. So d equals to square root 1.2 kilograms divided by 730 newtons per meter, 2.3 meters per second square plus two times 0 0.44 times 9.8 times 0 0.05 in meters, okay? Given in centimeters, you convert into meters. All right, then you have your original compression as 0 0.097 meters, okay? Or 9.7 centimeter, okay? Uh, so this time, um, well, it's a little bit um, like what we did for conservation of energy, but um, you have work done by non-conservative force. Okay, so instead of this equals to zero, you um, replace that with non work done by non-conservative force. Otherwise, the other side of the equation is the same. Okay. All right. Um, I think I'm going 